Howdy folks, Bearded Appliance Repair here with another one for you. We got a Whirlpool washer. And what it's doing is it's it's not going into the rinse cycle. Uh, customer, what they were telling me was, is they'll start it, it'll go into wash, uh, but once it gets to the rinse cycle, it just stops and does nothing. Um, whenever I run into these, um, there's a few things to look for. Uh, one, making sure it's got the correct water, um, and that's what I'm what I'm showing you here. But uh, this is just a preview what you're seeing now. First thing we're going to do is get into diagnostics and go through uh, what I typically do whenever I'm looking into a um, no fill situation, and that's actually what we have going on. And I'll show you guys how to do it. Uh, first thing we do is we get into diagnostics and how we do that is by spinning the knob left right 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 left right and you want to do this whenever it's in standby mode um, you're seeing me do it now and then you know you're in it when you see all those lights flash like that then you want to turn it twice maybe three times to get to those two lights and that's the manual test and then the first test comes up in the manual test is lid lock. And then the second one would be cold water valve, which is this. When you hit that start button, you should um, see some water come through. This here is the hot water test. And then boom, we got hot water there. So we know we got hot water. We're just not getting any cold water. And you can hear that solenoid hum. So if you hear a whenever you're running cold water or the cold water test, um, you know that solenoid is getting power so two things it's gonna be is either you don't have cold water from the wall which is what I'm checking now what you want to do is you want to take off that uh, connection turn the water off first of course you don't want to cause a leak um, or a flood turn the water off at the wall get that connection off of that valve back there which is the blue side and then you know route it into the tub of the washer and see if you got good water there. If you got good water there, um, likely it's going to be your um, water valve, which that's what it is in this case. I'm going to show you guys how to get into it and uh, uh, replace it and everything. So this water valve is behind this control panel, and I've already taken this screw out, but you got to get this screw here. Uh, you can use a torque um, set to get that off or a quarter inch um, I use my torque to get it off today but once you get that screw off you get a putty knife you get underneath it on each side there's these clips that hold it in and then you pretty much just lift it up pull it towards you on the bottom and then it'll come free on the top and you can just lay it over um, and right there's the water valve and to get it off all the way that panel that's right there where the valve stems just come out uh, you got to get that that metal off of there so we can actually maneuver that valve out of this washer and get the new one in and this video by the way guys while you're watching me get that panel off this will help anybody out that has this washer with those lights on the bottom you know it starts with like sensing wash rinse spin and lid lock if you got those lights on the bottom of this sometimes they're green sometimes they're yellow um, it can be a an amana can be a maytag um, can be you know any whirlpool made washer this video will help you out diagnostics has it changed on these and probably 10 years or so it's all the same right now but and this is the most common washer out there too this is just a whirlpool made <laughs> I've seen this washer many times you know with different names on them Crossley even even has one pretty much just like this but um, anyways we got that panel off and then there's just more torque screws that hold on the rest of the valve right here you see me getting off and then she comes right out um you do got to disconnect the wire from the board and it's always a good idea to have this thing unplugged 
Um, you can see that this thing's still plugged up for me, but don't do what I do. <laughs> um, be smart. Unplug the unit before you're working on it. Do as I say, not as I do. You know the saying. But, um, okay. Old valve is out. And one other thing to look at, guys, before you guys go and replace a valve, is you can look and see these little screens and see if they got built up in them. Sometimes you can, you know, just clean them out and they'll work okay for you. Or it'll, it'll at least buy you some time so you can, you know, plan ahead, get a valve, and maybe get some of your washing done. Um, but you see me, I'm trying to get this thing out. Cause sometimes you can just get some pliers and grab it and pull it out and clean it. But this one here, it's made a little bit different than I'm used to. So um, I tried getting a pick to try and remove this screen and I get it off but when I get it off I also break it and yeah I wouldn't recommend doing that if it doesn't come out easy just don't worry about it get a new valve and maybe one of them screens that you can put in the water supply line you know go into the valve um, if you don't know what I'm talking about um, check the links below and um, I'll put it down in there for you. It's on, you can probably pick them up at Lowe's to be honest with you. Because if you got sediment coming in and there's a bunch of sand or uh, some sort of organic material um, in that valve area, I mean, that's a water supply issue and you just want to prevent that from getting in the valve. But, anyways, we're going to slide this new valve in here, get those torque screws back in. And my battery is, um, it's dying, so it's going to sound like I'm over-torquing these. Um, but my battery's just dying in my drill, and I just needed to replace it. So uh, don't torque them down too much. Uh, you can strip them out, and that can cause more issues for you and everything. So, um, yeah, don't, don't torque them down too much. It's just plastic. But once you get the valve in... Remember to reconnect the harness to the control board. Once that's in, you can get that panel back on. Once that panel is back on, you can get the water hooked up back, hooked back up to it, you know, and give her a good test, make sure she's working for you. Yeah, and these washers over the years, they change a little bit. Like the valve in this one is probably a different valve um, in other machines because that's one thing they do change is parts in these. Um, they redesign them and, you know, try to make them a little bit better or a little bit cheaper um, for them, you know, make a profit, all that good stuff. Anyways. Um, there's slight differences in them over the years, but they the way they work is pretty much the same. Might be different parts, might be mounted a little bit different, might be a different control board for each one, but the basics are the same. Um, just want to make sure you guys know that. But we got that panel back into place. Got the screw started. I'm gonna get them back in. Oh, and this tool here, this little 90 degree tool, best tool ever. I got a uh, an Amazon store. Um, I'll leave a link in to the description below as well of my favorite tools or the tools I use or want if I don't already have them um, that's one of them that's on that list I'm a big Dewalt fan um, so I got a Dewalt version but there's a, a bunch of them out there Craftsman, Cobalt, whatever um, it's a pretty sweet tool it's my favorite one and I use it almost on a daily basis but okay we're gonna hook the water back up and you see how I'm going 
backwards and then I go forwards. Uh, you want to be careful putting these water lines back on. Uh, when I first started doing this, I cross threaded them all the time, and that's just a headache for you. I mean, you can get it on there the way it's supposed to be on there after you cross thread it. It'll just take some time, and it'll make you mad, piss you off. Anyways, um, whenever you do it, just uh, start back, let it fall into place, and you'll feel it too. And some of you guys may even know what I'm talking about, and you've probably been doing this for years, but. Um, just make sure you don't cross thread it when you get it back on I mean it's just plastic and you just don't want to cause a headache for yourself but, yeah that's back in putting the control panel back into place is easy peasy as well just slide it in its slots that it came out of and then the, the clips on the bottom they just snap into place That side there, and this side here. That's in. I'm uh, gonna get back into diagnostics. So left, right, 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 left, right. Got the lights. Go over three times. Manual test. Lid lock. Cold water valve. Hot water valve. Oh yeah. Don't forget. Turn on the water. <laughs> <laughs> I do this all the time and people call me too um, they'll move the washer from one house to another they'll hook everything up and they're like oh this thing was working great at my other house I get out there find out they just didn't turn the water on um, but anyways uh, there's the hot water here's the cold water wait okay here's the cold water coming through just fine and that's it washer is fixed so if this helped you guys i mean give me a like subscribe and i appreciate y'all watching